Hey there, I know it's been a minute, but uh, I actually got my hands on a review copy of Wild Hearts, and I wanted to give you guys a bit of an early impressions, so this is going to be a little bit more off the cuff, off script, more of a raw dog kind of video, so in the background, there's definitely going to be obviously Wild Hearts footage, but as far as it pertaining to exactly what I'm saying at all moments, that's probably not going to be the case, so if you want to just throw this on the background, do a little bit of a podcast style, that'll be perfectly fine. Now, this is still going to be kind of broken down into sections, but it's not going to be like as structured as most of my videos usually are, so bear with me. Now, this is the very sad part. So, performance has been very rough for me. I play with the 3060 Ti, and I still had to drop down to low settings to make this playable. And even then, there's still a lot of load in and sometimes even a bit of stuttering. I play World and Rise in a lot of other games perfectly on the highest settings, but like this has been extremely rough for me. They did say already that there is a patch in the works to kind of like help with CPU bottlenecking and optimization so we'll see how that goes but keep your eyes on different videos reddit posts anything like that to kind of keep an eye on performance status now like i said i'm playing on pc but i've seen people playing on console and heard people playing on console and they really haven't had any issues and it looks very clean to me from the streams that i've watched so if you're on console then probably just disregard this part Ooh, okay so let's start with the combat. I've had a very, very good time with the combat in Wild Hearts. It's a faster pace and it can get pretty flashy at times, honestly, to the point where it's like you can get to like DMC levels of flashy, especially when you're using things like the Wagasa or even like the Claw. I was kind of expecting like the style <laughs> ranking and everything to pop up in the upper right hand corner, but I say this and it's a very good thing. I'm not saying this as it's like a death. I'm saying that it's a good thing, but if that's not your style, it probably won't click. Building the Karakuri is actually extremely well executed, and it's not intrusive like I thought it was going to be. And the Karakuri themselves, it's very varied, and there's even a bit of a fun mechanic where, like, you build multiple of the simple Karakuri to make more, I guess, advanced ones. Things like you've seen in the trailers, like the huge hammer that smashes down, and even these fireworks that are kind of like, basically, essentially, flash bombs. It's very, very cool, and I thought that I was going to stray away from the building aspect at first, but the more that I'm using it, the more that I'm actually starting to like it. So the weapons are extremely varied and very unique, and I'm going to give like a very brief kind of summary of kind of how they play. So don't take this as like a full review or like in-depth guide for any of the weapons, because I feel like that would be irresponsible on my part because I really haven't gotten to dive in deep with any of these weapons, because you guys know how I am. I play every single weapon that I can, and it, my time gets split between them. So, as far as a guide or anything, it's not going to be this. The Wagasa is very, very fun. It is so cool. It definitely, in my opinion, is the highest skill ceiling weapon, but it's very rewarding in return. So the basics is it's a parry style weapon, and you actually earn gauge every time that you parry and when you attack the monster, but the majority is going to come from you actually parrying monster attacks. And your gauge actually has three bars to where your attack gets increased as you go up the levels. But once you get to that third and final level, your moveset gets drastically enhanced. The claw is very fast paced, very fluid as well. This is perfect for people who wanted to try the Tonfas in Monster Hunter Frontier. Or if you already loved the Tonfas and tried them, then you will absolutely love the claw. It's extremely fast and it's a bit of a hit and run tactics. You'll have an extremely good time with these. There's also loads of potential for playing vertically. So if that's your kind of play style, like constantly being in the air, this is a good weapon as well. The cannon is very powerful especially in a multiplayer setting, but the gauges are fun and the pit mechanic is honestly great. I really, really enjoy it. Oh, and it also has a freaking laser beam, so yeah, it's dope. 
much to my surprise, the mall was actually my first love, and it's an extremely fun take on the hammer weapon itself, with such a large web of combos that you can string together and use at any moment, it's extremely, extremely fun. And the fact that you can get vertical with it and splice that into your attacks, you can use that to dodge attacks and use it tactically as well, and I absolutely love it. The Nadachi has some more hidden combo-esque techniques, and the sheath attacks feel very sacred sheathish with charge levels that will do different attacks. I haven't used this weapon as much as I have the other ones, but in the time that I did use it, it still felt very fun and pretty weighty as far as the weapons go, and that's something that you don't see too, too much with these weapons, and that might be my only complaint, but the Nadachi, it definitely does. The Katana admittedly is my least played, but I feel like it's a mix between the other weapons speaking more to me and them actually starting you with the Katana. It has a lot of fun attacks, and honestly, it's fast as hell, and you can really keep the pressure up on the Kimono. If you want to kind of like continue a Weeb-esque style of play, this is the absolute perfect weapon for you, and they did not lack on that part. The Bow is actually a fantastic take on bow weapons. With your usual charge shots and then actual charged up shots, whether you're in vertical or horizontal stances, you'll get like specific advantages, but you'll also get some added bonuses if you switch between the vertical and horizontal play styles. Okay, so the staff, quite honestly, is one of the most ambitious weapons and one that will draw people's attention for good reason. The transformation attacks are fluid and smooth, and then once you do enough of those attacks, you can actually break out that great sword attack that we've seen in trailers that does insane amounts of damage. I cannot stress it enough, each of the transformation attacks and then the forms that you can actually take are so much fun. Weapons actually have innate skills and inherited skill slots. It's a really cool system. Think kind of like the Rampage weapons from Rise, but this system actually gives you incentive to take like different build paths towards the weapons. So instead of taking that straightforward path from like the starting weapon down to the weapon you're looking to create, you might actually take a little bit of a roundabout way to try to pick up some inherited skills to throw on that weapon. So you and somebody else in a multiplayer lobby could have the same weapon, but depending on your inherited skills, you could have a much more powerful weapon than they do. The challenge of combat is definitely there. Komodo will absolutely punish you, they'll combo you, and their pin attacks specifically are particularly devastating. Like, it's actually really cool how the particular status or element the Komodo might use really come out in these pin attacks, and they will kill you if you've taken some damage prior to. A big shout out to the lovely and amazing Goop for pointing this out, but Rage Tail is a bit of an oddity because it's basically like a giant hitbox, like an actual box. So if you hit anywhere in that box, you still hit the kimono even if you aren't actually hitting the kimono. But that's the only example that I've noticed so far, but I will absolutely keep my eye on that and you should as well. Healing is a bit more of the issue though when it comes to the challenge because you have a decent bit of it already and it's pretty readily available throughout the arena itself and even throughout the world. So that might contribute to it being a little bit easier, more so than the actual monster moveset or your skill itself. But the kimono are really really fun to hunt. The variation in the monsters that I've experienced already has been fantastic. They all even have like these enraged states that really take their movesets and amplify them and change them. And I love the way that they hone in on what makes the monster unique. You'll see when you actually go into the hunts, but these enraged states play on their advantages very, very well. I have to say right now, my favorite is actually Lava Back, and it's not really anything in particular, but the mix-up of like short-ranged and long-ranged attacks that it has, and just the way that it acts like a monkey, it, it's very cool, and I had a great time with the hunt. And uh, honestly, I've barely touched, you know, the 20 or so kimono that are in this base game, so... I'm excited, very excited to hunt the other ones that I haven't seen yet.
multiplayer hunts have been running swimmingly. I've had zero issues finding sessions or joining and hosting myself. And as far as disconnecting or anything like that, haven't had a single disconnect yet. Even other people in the session, I haven't seen anybody disconnect yet. So it's been going great. And you can obviously see the benefit of crossplay immediately. Hunting with three people max is different, but it actually feels good. And it's a nice balance of aggro share between the hunters and the kimono. The armor looks great in this game. Very clearly in Eastern style, duh. But there will be plenty of times where you just admire in awe how good your hunter looks. The actual skills on the armor are actually pretty cool itself too. Uh, there's a few that actually activate only if it's like during the day or during the night. So I found that really, really interesting. Along with that, it actually has this kind of like fun system where you can upgrade the armor to kind of go down more of a human path or a kimono path. And there's actually like two levels to this. So like two levels of the human path and two levels of the kimono path. And some of the skills on the armor actually won't activate unless you're at one of those two levels in the kimono or human path. And it's so fun and it really makes you like kind of think a little bit harder as far as what armor you make and what armor pieces you put together. And I mean, outside of, you know, the cool skills that activate with it, these path armor upgrades look absolutely fantastic. A perfect example is Fume Beak's armor. If you go down the kimono path, you get actual legit wings on your back and it just Oh, it's so good. Exploration is very fun. The only thing is I wish that you did have a little bit of a way to kind of like travel faster while you're on foot and to travel across the land. But this is also something that might change with Karakuri. So don't hold me to that just yet because you might actually be able to get something that makes you travel faster on the ground. But speaking of fast travel, uh, the cool thing is you actually get to decide like where your fast travel camps are. You obviously have like a limited resource, so you won't be able to just build camps anywhere. But the camps that you do build, you get to decide where they go. And that's one of the things that I like too, is that you're not forced to build anything in your areas, in your at the dragon pits, in your camp areas. You're not forced to build anything specifically. You get to decide what you want to build. And it's very, very cool. You can go out and try to find the kimono yourself, or you can build things called signal towers that will actually kind of ping their location. But you're going to have to use resources to make those hunting towers. And it's a great play on resource management and convenience. This game is going to get compared to Monster Hunter as it should, but it definitely deserves to be in that conversation. The unique ideas and fresh takes that it has, they hit extremely well. And that's what we need in the hunting community, the hunting genre, is something that's going to push to breed creativity. Because it's been a little stagnant, so we need something to kind of spice things up a little bit and have some healthy conversations. Competition. Now, $70 is always a steep price to ask for a game. If you're on the consoles, I can without a doubt say with the good performance that it has had, I can absolutely say I feel like it's worth $70. If you're on PC though, I would wait. I would wait to see how this upcoming like day one patch affects optimization and performance. And if that isn't enough for you, future patches may address it. But I would definitely wait and see if you're on PC. Now, performance issues and optimization problems aside, this game is so great. I mean, I can't even complete the game because I'm having too much fun hunting, exploring, and building new gear. And you guys know me. I love playing every single weapon, so I'm making multiple variations of different weapons before I can even progress. But this is also going to be a game that's very easy to kind of drop in and play at any time that you want. It's really, really easy to drop into somebody's session or host the session yourself or even to jump into your own hunt. You can rapidly go from kimono to kimono, and it's very, very fluid. I enjoyed it. I like it, and it's more of an arcade style, I would probably have to say, as far as like when you're actually on the grind and trying to grind out materials, but it's good. It feels great, because the entire process of hunting, exploring, and combat feels so gratifying and so good every single time that I go out and I really could not recommend it more. 
But that is it, guys. I mean, like I said, this is a bit of an early impressions video, and it kind of went a little bit longer than I expected. But we can absolutely look forward to a full review at some point once I actually complete the game, get to uh, get hands on with like the end game system that they talked about prior to the release. And I will definitely, definitely be making a why I love weapon series for every single weapon in this game because they are so, so good. But thank you for hanging out, whether you podcast it or whatever it may be. You can definitely catch me streaming this for sure over at Twitch. And uh, if you'd like to join the Discord, if you have any questions about the game that I might be able to answer, those links will be down in the description. But on that note, guys, have a good night. Happy hunting. And I will see you in the next video.